welcome and thanks for joining us for worship today. Wherever you are, however this moment finds you, we are glad that you are here with us. We hope you know that even though our building is currently closed, the church is most definitely open. And so if you need to be in touch with any of the church staff and you don't know how to do that, just go to our website, uuhaveral.org, and you'll find information there about how to be in touch with us. And you can also find information about how to receive our e-newsletter if you'd like to get that. For now, let us enter into worship. Let us drop down into this time and this space. Let us be grateful and let us be glad that we are here together. In her novel, The Color Purple, Alice Walker writes, tell the truth. Have you ever found God in church? I never did. I just found a bunch of folks hoping for God to show. Any God I ever felt in church, I brought in with me. And I think all the other folks did too. They come to church to share God not find God. We come to church this day, not to a building, but to a gathering of souls open to the spirit. We gather across time and space to share our experiences of the holy, to dig deep, to be inspired so that we can then reach out for what we need and so we can reach out and give what we have to give. So let us pray. Come, Spirit, come. Light a fire in our hearts. Help us to know your presence this moment and this day. Amen. And let's join in singing now. Let's lift our voices and sing 
wake now my senses. You will see the words on your screen and I hope you will sing along. Now I'm going to ask Sophia to light our chalice, the symbol of our free faith, and the reminder that when we are gathered, the Spirit is moving in our midst. Will you join me now? in saying the words of our unison affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Let us now enter into our time of meditation and prayer and honoring of all those joys and concerns that are on our hearts and are most certainly on the world's hearts. Let us join our voices or drop into listening of spirit of life.
And now we have the great honor of lighting candles for the joys and concerns that have come to us this week from you and that come to us from our greater community and siblings around this country and world that we are all holding at all times. So grateful that Frank will light our tapered candles today, some from our most loved sanctuary. Our first candle today is lit by Shauna Marion, who is holding a joy for her son, David Marion, who graduated high school this week, and for all the wonderful cards they've received from this, our church family. She says, we are so blessed. I'm going to light a candle of gratitude for the health and prayers for the recovery of longtime church member Doug Rosine, who self-sufficient and competent person that he is, Doug had a serious allergic reaction on Thursday evening and drove himself to the hospital and was admitted in his now in the ICU, hopefully he's out by now, um, gradually getting better, but it was serious and certainly somewhat scary, but just so grateful that, that Doug is doing okay. Love and prayers to Doug and Margaret and their family. We will now light a candle of deep sorrow and honoring for George, George, George Floyd, whose life was so tragically taken on Monday and yet another incidence of police violence against the African-American community in Minneapolis. May this candle honor George Floyd. May it honor and hold his mourning friends and family and the Minneapolis community now in a state of great chaos and unrest. We pray no more precious souls are lost in that chaos and unrest. We pray for peace. And my God, we pray for a path forward. And speaking of a path forward, I'm gonna write, light a candle of gratitude for a gathering online last night of different clergy talking about how the church can be an agent against racism and white supremacy and our friend and neighbor, Pastor Kenneth Young from Calvary Baptist Church was on that panel and it was, it was beautiful and over, I believe 300 people joined that, that Facebook live gathering. It was, a, it was a powerful testimony to the power of love and justice at work. And let us light one last candle for all those joys and concerns that might be on your hearts and are on the hearts of this, our greater world that have gone unnamed this morning. We know there are so many. And I would like to ask that we hold a silence, a brief silence for them all now. Won't you now join your hearts together in prayer? God, great beloved, divine center that is in us and most certainly among us, be with us now. Help us to return home to ourselves. We bring all of these joys and concerns, questions and tragedies, wonders and silence. We gather them up and we, 
we look for you in them. We look for sense in them. We look for holding with them. We look for the connective strands of love in them. And we look for you in them. We feel a great love sustaining this, our spiritual community. Help us to not forget it. Help us to not stop feeling it, even in the face of great despair. We don't know at times what power it holds, but we do know it holds a power and we are grateful for it. Help us to know how to take it out into this world for all those looking for it, looking for comfort, hoping to be seen, hoping to belong somewhere. For this place of belonging and love, we are grateful. For this place of holding all that is on our heart, we are grateful. And in the name of a great spirit of love and light, we pray to keep us and to keep us tethered to each other and to this beautiful broken world. In all of this, we pray. Amen. Amen. I am regularly reminded and struck by what a generous congregation we have. From those of you who are now managing and managing to do it with a smile on your face to serve hungry people every Saturday, even in the midst of this crisis, and all of you who are contributing to that effort, to those of you who help out by reaching out in love and care to those of you who share your resources so generously. We are thriving because of you. None of us can do it alone. We need each other now more than ever. I hope you know what a difference your generosity makes in this congregation and in the wider community. Our morning offering will be gratefully received.
reading this morning is from Alice Walker's novel, The Color Purple, which is set in rural Georgia during the time of Jim Crow segregation and focuses on the lives of several black women. Speaker in this passage is the character Shug Avery. Here's the thing, the thing I believe. God is inside you and inside everybody else. You come into the world with God, but only them that search for it inside find it. And sometimes it just manifests itself even if you are not looking or don't know what you are looking for. Trouble do it for most folks, I think. Sorrow, Lord. My first step from the old white man was trees, then air, then birds, then other people. But one day when I was sitting quiet and feeling like a motherless child, which I was, it come to me, that feeling of being part of everything, not separate at all. I knew that if I cut a tree, my arm would bleed. And I laughed and I cried and I run all around the house. I knew just what it was. In fact, when it happened, you can't miss it. You can just relax, go with everything that's going and praise God by liking what you like. When I was a boy each week On Sunday we would go to church And pay attention to the priest And he would read the holy word And consecrate the holy bread And everyone would kneel and bow Today the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything Everything, everything is holy now And when I was in Sunday school We would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two and Jesus made the water wine And I remember feeling sad Miracles don't happen still But now I can't keep track Cause everything's a miracle Everything, everything, everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small Better magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, but finding where there isn't one. When holy water was a rare at best, it barely wet my fingertips. Now I have to hold my breath Like I'm swimming in a sea of air It used to be a world half there Heaven's second rate hand me down But I walk it with a reverend air Cause everything is holy now
hard to say See another new morning come Say it's not a sacrament I tell you that it can't be done This morning outside I stood I saw a little red wing bird Shining like a burning bush And singing like a scripture verse It made me want to bow my head I remember when church let out How things have changed since then Everything is holy now It used to be a world half there Heaven second rate hand me down But I walk it with a reverend air Cause everything is whole now It's been, and not in a good way. Our nation crossed the mark of 100,000 deaths from COVID-19 earlier this week. Another black man, George Floyd, was killed by police. His neck under a police officer's knee on a Minneapolis sidewalk. In Central Park, a black man bird watching was accused of, was threatened with the police being called and another example of the fact that we live in a culture that is stained and poisoned by white supremacy. We are living in hard and trying times and we need to be strong and we need to be grounded, awake and paying attention in order to get through these times, doing everything we can to make things better and not to make them worse, right? One day this week, I realized how hungry I am how hungry I am these days for a life-giving word, a word of encouragement, a word of hope, for something that will renew my spirit, for the renewal of faith that it is true, this life-affirming gospel that we proclaim, that there is a great love that we come from and that we belong to, that in spite of all the evidence to the contrary, in the end, love does win. I believe that, but sometimes, like any of you, I need to have that faith restored. We do live in a broken world. And we need to be grounded and strong if we're going to be of any use to others and to ourselves. We need to do our own inner work if we wanna be strong enough to resist the fourth forces of division and oppression that are all around us. And here's one thing I know, we can't do it all on our own. One simply can't conjure up everything that you need. And I am on my knees grateful for the gifts that can come unbidden and unexpected often when I most need them. Moments of solace and beauty and grace. I had one of these moments just the other day. It felt like a little miracle. I was in my car running an errand and you know how if you have 
Bluetooth technology, your phone can connect to your car speaker system. And my car, and sometimes it drives me crazy, plays these songs that are in my phone randomly. Well, I push the button to turn on the sound system and the song that came up, and I haven't heard this song in several years, was the one we just heard, Holy Now by Peter Mayer. And it brought tears to my eyes and it fed my soul and it preached to me the way I needed to be preached to that day. Came as a gift and as a blessing. I listened to it a couple of times and then I went where I was doing, going and ran my errand. And the next day I happened to be in my car again and I thought, I wanna to listen to that song. So I punched it up in my phone and it was there, but when I tried to play it, it wouldn't play. It said, you need to download this. And I thought, well, how is that possible? It just played yesterday. There's probably something about the technology I just don't understand, but it made me think of it as like a little miracle that it was there the day before, or if it wasn't there the day before, it was like the Holy Spirit said, he really needs this song right now. So I'm gonna use the means that I have at my disposal, which is this Bluetooth technology. And I'm just gonna shoot it right into his little metal cubicle there. And I was grateful for that. This Sunday is Pentecost, the day in the Christian tradition that celebrates the disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit, touched the scripture say by tongues of fire. The story of Pentecost is that the Spirit is unleashed and it goes everywhere. As we just heard Peter Mayer saying, everything is holy now. And at the same time right now, pastors and congregations are having conversations about reopening churches as if we have ever closed, which begs an interesting question. Where do you find God? Where and how do you experience the holy? In a building? In a particular ritual made up by humans? This isn't a new question. Thousands and thousands of years ago, when the Hebrew people were taken into exile in Babylon, they worried, how will we worship God when we can't get to the temple? How will we sing our holy song in a strange land? And what they learned from that hardship was that God wasn't stuck in the temple. God was with them wherever they were. And this changed Judaism as did the exodus from Egypt and that 40 year journey through the wilderness to the promised land. These people who are our spiritual forebears, they learned that God was with them when they were in exile, when they were in the wilderness. Our God doesn't live in a temple or a sanctuary. In our reading this morning, we heard the truth that God seems to have a soft spot for those who are hurting or oppressed, that those at the margins are oftentimes more likely to be in touch with the holy. Here's the thing, Shug Avery says, the thing I believe, God is inside you and inside everybody else. You come into the world with God, but only them that search for it inside find it. And sometimes it just manifests itself even if you're not looking or don't know what you're looking for. Trouble do it for most folks, I think. Sorrow, Lord. Do you know what she's talking about? Haven't you felt this aliveness, this awakeness called the spirit? I need it so much, especially these days. And I expect you do too. We each have our broken places. If you want to feel the spirit, try getting in touch with those places where you feel weak and vulnerable. Don't be afraid to admit that you don't know all the answers. Share your hurts, 
share your longings, ask for help. God will hear your cry. How are we going to get through this time, my friends? We're going to get through it together by becoming more aware of our connections, by becoming more aware of our shared humanity, by resisting the dominating culture of dehumanization and death, especially now putting ourselves in the way of grace wherever and whenever we can being mystics in the ways that we can be and want to be, taking heart that if you open your eyes, the holy is all around. It's holy right here. It's holy right now. God doesn't live in a building. And we gather not so much to find God, but to share God, to share what is good and holy and true. And in these days, we are finding out of necessity new ways to do that. Our seeking and our finding will continue to unfold. Our life in the spirit will continue to grow and deepen. Anybody need some good news for these days? Here's what I've got. There is a spirit moving in our midst, and you can be in touch with that presence. Because the holy is everywhere, this close. You are part of a great and abiding love. The power of the universe knows your name. So now, Go out and live your life based on that truth. As the prophet said so long ago, what does God require of you but to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with your God? My spiritual companions, let us keep on journeying in the spirit holding the brokenness and the beauty, singing our songs of love and hope. Amen. Let's lift our voices now and sing Immortal Love. You'll find the words on your screen.
And now Sophia is going to go and extinguish our chalice. And we're going to join in saying our chalice extinguishing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. My dearest ones, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may there be a fire that burns so brightly in our hearts that it strengthens and emboldens us for the living of these days, able to do the work we have been given to do, to love one another, to serve those in need, to build the common good and help renew the face of this good earth. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, friends.